Today's screencast is a little short, but I think it's pretty fun. In the last screencast, we created this login form, and we kind of set everything up, got all working. We're using this load view to load the login form into the page. Well, as you know, there's generally two types of views um, if you're not including partials. There's the content view, and then there's the layout view. In the content view, we have everything that's inside an, of an individual page. So your blog index would have a different content view than the page that allows your user to update their account information. You may end up having the same layout for the entire site, and it's not irregular for that to be the case. In order to implement a layout, we might come in here, go to Views, create a folder, Layouts, and we'll create the application layout, application.php. So this is our layout. And then here we'll include the content from the content view. This is our footer. So there's our application layout. So we'll come back over here. In order to use it, we need to take the data from the content view and put it into the layout. And we'll do that sending an array. But when you call this load view, it outputs the data directly uh, to you know its standard output. So it's going to go straight to the browser. So it's going to display the content view first, and then it's going to display the layout. So we have to add the third parameter, true, which tells the view loader that it wants to render the content view into this variable. So nothing has been output to the browser yet. Then we're going to take this variable, send it to the application, layout, and then it will render everything at once. So let's save this and go back over here and take a look. Hit reload. <laughs> field. I typed field. There we go. So here's our uh, content view inside of our layout. So that's fine and dandy. This code here is a little clumsy, and then we have to initialize the data, and frequently there's view data. So let's uh, implement this in a more fun way. So we'll start by, let's just go ahead and get rid of this welcome message, <laughs> and go to our controller extension. Now, currently, we're only extending the controller class so that we can return information about the user and hold it there. So we can keep the user information persistent without having to constantly be calling for a user variable in each one of our methods based on whether or not they're logged in. Let's expand this a bit. We're going to need to add a few variables. Now in order to uh, show the layout, show the content view, we're going to need a layout view and we're just going to default it to application. We're going to need a content view, and we're going to default that to empty. And then view data. Our view data will be the data that's sent to the content view. So that's really all of the variables that we need. They can be accessed from within the method by using, let's just go ahead and get rid of this data here. We can do this view data, just like that. And we could even change this to this view data, and it would work just fine. Let's take it further. Whenever a controller has the function called underscore output, it'll accept a single parameter. What happens is, instead of the output from any method inside of this controller, and in this situation, this is the control a, a controller extension, so all of your controllers that extend my controller will have this functionality now. Whenever output occurs, whether you, um, you know, so when, when this method ends, or when you send uh, this load view, it's going to send output. So 
this load view doesn't actually directly output to the browser. What happens is it waits until that method is complete and then it sends all of the output at once. Otherwise, you would not be able to do things like set session data uh, because that's a cookie and it has to be sent to the browser as a header before any content can be sent. Once uh, the execution pointer gets to the end of the method, then it's going to output everything that's been buffered up. So in this case, there's only one chunk that's been buffered up, and that comes from here. So this variable, dollar sign $output, will contain all of the HTML for the application layout with the content view inside of it. By extending this, we can do something at the end of every single method that extends that's in a controller that extends our my controller class. So let's start by setting the default content view. So if this content view is not equal to false, so what that means is if we don't want a content view to render automatically, we can set content view to false. Notice how it's not false right now. It's empty. If we use exclamation equals, then empty will be false. This will return false because content view is equal to false. However, if we use two equal signs, what it does is it changes this operator. This operator uh, takes data type in, into consideration. So false, a boolean, is not the same as an empty string. So unless we specifically declare content view as false, then this will pass as true. And empty this content view. So if this content view is empty, we're going to assign one automatically. So we'll do this content view equals this router class concatenate a front slash this router method. Okay, so what this does is it's going to return a value into content view. This router class is the name of the class that we are currently in. In this case, it would be auth. So you'll see that this folder here in views is the same as this cla class name, so auth and auth. Then a front slash, so inside of auth, and then this router method. So in here, our method, in this case, is login. So you see login.php. So it's automatically assigning auth slash login. You'll notice in here, we are not putting a .php extension because the loader already does that. So auth slash login is all we actually need. So that sets the name of the content view. Now we want to render the content view, render it to a, a variable called yield. And first, let's make it a little bit more robust by saying if path exists, we'll use the app path global constant this content view and then we'll also use the constant for extension so what this will render is the path to your application folder in CodeNiter slash views slash then the content view which we just created dot PHP the dot PHP is necessary for the file exists method not for loading the view so before we render this we want to make sure the file exists so that we're not getting an error. I'm going to go ahead and use the ternary operator here so if file exists returns true then this load view this content view and we're going to use send it to it this view data the view data uh, variable which is currently an empty array and we're going to send the parameter true so that it will render this left. So instead of displaying this to the uh, the browser, it's going to pop it into the yield variable. Now, if the file doesn't exist, we're simply going to return false. So yield will equal false. Now, we want to render the layout. If this layout view echo this layout view uh, actually, <laughs> this load view 
layouts. So our layouts will always be in the layout folder. Concatenate this layout view. And we're going to send the yield, which is the data from the content view, into that view and send, set the parameter true so that we can return it left into the echo. Now, if we don't have a layout view, we may still have content view to display, and that's fine. We can just echo yield. All right, this should be it. This should give us some really fun functionality. Um, so now we can come over here to auth and kind of refactor it a bit. We already set up this view data for the message. Now we don't need any of this at all. It's going to automatically look for auth slash login and render that as the content view using the view data. It's going to automatically use the application layout because that's what we set up here. Now if, if we didn't do anything wrongly, we should be able to come over here and see, well apparently did, we did do something wrongly. Yep, I put this content view. It needs to be content underscore view. So here we are. We're back to where we were using a layout, but now our layouts and our view names are all automatic. So let's go ahead and create another little test method just for fun. Test. And we'll just leave it blank. Now we'll come over here. New file. PHP. This is our test method content view. And we'll save this as test.php. So again, auth class, test method. Auth folder, test view. So now, when we come over here and go to test, auth slash test, you'll see that it's rendering the content inside of our layout. Now, Sometimes we want to override some of this information. For example, we might need another layout. This is the admin site. And so this will be our admin layout. See here, layouts admin. To override which layout is used, anywhere before the end of the method, we can just do this layout view admin. Save it. Come over here. Reload. This is the admin site. So now our all of our development is going to be much easier. We don't have to keep calling a bunch of views. Um, we ne never really have much of a reason to even override most of this functionality. Uh, the capacity exists for us to override it. it the capacity exists for o us to override the content view. For example, we may want to use login. Uh, auth slash login actually. So our test view is going to look load the uh, the login content view now. So you may find reasons to do this and that's why it's here. Um, but this is a, a lot of help for a designer for example. So your designer is, is mildly familiar with Codeigniter. They're not a developer. They want to be able to get in and style up a bunch of pages that you will then come in afterwards and fill with dynamic data. All they have to do is create the controller method empty. Then come over and create the file and then fill the view. And then they're able to see and click around the site and do everything they want to do and, and it, it uh, reduces the headache for the designer and overall it makes your code much smaller. So we're, we're removing a, a number of pieces of code and then on top of that, we have the sweet output function that we can modify anytime we want to, and it'll modify the, the way the entire site functions. So if we need to add something into every single, some functionality into every, some, every single output in the site, we have a central point at which that can be done. So uh, I know this is a bit short, and that some of the functionality uh, isn't know exactly what you may be looking for but I use this functionality on my sites and I wanted other people to know about it 
So here it is. Uh, next week, I'm hoping to get into something a little more complicated with some uh, associations with the PHP Active Record.